marker beginning. All right, so today we're gonna look at our infinite runner. So if we take a look at it, uh, this is the state of it. I do have it running maybe a little bit, tiny bit too fast. Um, it's it's really really hard to play now. Uh, I think I may have uh, tweaked some of the um, uh, some of the numbers a little bit too much um, a couple times ago, but. Uh, what we're figuring out is how we can get it so we have different types of trees. And we're going to use that, we're going to do that uh, using this tree data pattern here. So we have this, you know, we, we sort of fleshed out a little bit of what we wanted to do. But we're going to have, I think we're going to call this like the base, um, like the base tree data. And then we're going to want, um, We're gonna to want to then have different trees based upon this. So what are what are you? You were like trees, tree data. I don't know if I want that specifically. Uh, I think it's yeah, more of it's gonna be something like this. We have a tall tree which has a prototype of this base tree. call this base tree. And the thing that's going to be different here, so we have speed x, speed y. If we keep those the same, but we do a branch size, trunk grain, trunk blue. Ooh, what's interesting is we don't have a trunk height. We have a branch size. We don't have a trunk height. Um, so let's maybe maybe try this. Uh, trunk height. And if we do something, what do we have right now? So in tree, we have trunk width and trunk height. That's coming in with trunk hit and trunk height there. Uh, so world, I believe we're creating the trunk. Create tree. So we're just setting the trunk, uh, the trunk height and the trunk width right here. I, I think we should set that. As, so 250 for height, and 20 for width. Let's do that here. So uh, height is 250 and width is 20. And that's like the basic one. Okay, so for trees, we have a uh, tree data. Okay, so I don't know if we need this. I think it's more like this. We want a tall tree, and so the prototype is gonna be the base tree. But what we're gonna change here is just the uh, the trunk height. So the trunk height is gonna be overridden and is gonna be, uh, let's do 400 instead. So, we have this tree data, but now we're going to have some logic in here that spins up a tree for us. We create the tree. And what that's going to do is it's an object that assign. Uh, so it's going to combine. Now we don't really need this entire fun uh, JSON.parse thing here. Although I do want a clone of this tall tree because if I don't get a true clone of it uh, then obviously that's going to be a problem how do I clone that um, well I could bring in lodash how we can clone that uh, I don't have that right now I don't, I don't I think I only have p5 js at, at this moment 
Does P5J? Oh no, P5JS probably hasn't loaded at this time. Maybe it. Yeah, I don't think it's really truly loaded at this time because it needs everything else to run. Um. So this JSON that parse JSON on stringify it is doing like a dirty like, I guess not dirty because that, that there's an actual thing in in that for like state change detection. Uh, it is not pretty uh, it's a very sort of down and dirty just get a scrappy scrappy um if i want another copy of this we can um like cloning the base tree and then cloning the tall tree can be done with object at a sign like this uh, but we potentially need multiple of them so the first thing we need is um, const we we need whatever of the tree um, oh I see what this is so this is like the tree the tree type it's like we're kind of bringing a string of the tree type so we're gonna need an object that maps these types over so we could then have tall tree, for example. I guess, and just a base tree. And if I do rename this to just tree, then we can call and say we want a tree, or we want a tall tree, and, and that would be it. So our base tree here, we need we need a copy of that. I want to do that here. So let's do um, uh, it's gonna be base tree. I think it is base tree equals. This function can be aware of that there is a base tree because uh, this is not like. It's abstracting away what's actually happening here. So we're we're only exposing this function. We're not really caring that the the user, uh, the programmer, is going to know exactly how it works. Um, or at least like that's the idea for like consuming something like this. Uh, okay, so base tree uh, is going to be an object that assign. Uh, we're going to take in a new object and the tree here. So this clones the tree because it's just you know, a, a single level. There's no, uh, everything here is primitive types. Therefore, it's going to do a true clone of it for us. So there is that object. It's now in the base tree. We get all those things. Now I want to take the base tree and do the exact same thing uh, in here. So I want to object of the sign a clone of the tall tree with whatever the prototype is. Oh, you know what? It's not base tree. Uh, I, I was wrong. We want this to be whatever, whatever tree type this is. But if I do that, I can't access you anymore. So this is um, my tree, new tree. This is actually going to be, uh, we need to name you. Tree types equals, okay, so this is going to be uh, tree types of type. All right, so we hand it a tall tree, for example. It's going to give us a clone of this right here. I wonder an object that assigned does it does the order matter? I'm really curious about this uh, because if if it doesn't really matter, I don't need to do this at all. I'm gonna comment this out because I realize that object that assigned could take any number of sources, but I don't know what the order that it cares about this is. So 
for example, we're going to start with an empty object. Uh, and then we're going to, if it moves from right to left, from left to right, uh, like at this point in time, I now want the trees. So uh, this is going to be the tree types, uh, tree types of type, and then uh, tree types um, of tree dot prototype. And if I do this, is it going to like properly, it, it, are we going to get the trunk height 400? Or are we going to get the trunk height 250? Uh, well, we'll, we'll find out, I suppose. So if I do that, we now have this create tree method here. So let's go back to world when we create the tree. So it, it has this random color for us. This is fine, but the trunk height, the trunk width, um, And this grabs the tree data. So in the constructor, we have this dot trees, tree velocity, tree trunk color. And this is using the, like, the tree data. So it sounds like to me, we're going to need to, well, okay, for right now, oh, and I, I changed it, didn't I? Because it's no longer tree data, it's now just tree. So this is, this is not going to work. Uh, I wonder if I should like create a, a class for the tree data. And then we can have uh, methods on here that would then get our tree, which would then get all the information on it. So, I mean, it's not going to be truly private, as it were, uh, but it's not going to look quite as, as public as, as this is. But right now, we're just reaching out. We're just grabbing the tree data directly, and that, that's not good. That's not what we want. We need to create the different tree and then we can we can figure out what it's uh what the tree velocity is for example uh so tree velocity now when we create the tree new tree the width the height the x the y the trunk width the trunk height uh, the branch color and any, you know, I wonder if I could then uh, change tree here and say, Hey, when we're getting created, instead of taking all of this in, what if we just take in the tree data, like the actual just tree data. And then we, um, we figure out you from that. Okay, so I guess that's one problem is is the location, the x and the y, uh, do have to be calculated based upon this. So we can do x and the y, and then the rest of the data, because we have speed x, speed y, branch size, trunk rad. So trunk location is going to create a vector of x and y. Okay, that's fine. Trunk width is, um, now we're going to have a trunk width. So this is going to be data dot uh, trunk width. Trunk height is going to be data dot for trunk height. Uh, branch color. Um, 
So we have this entire thing where you have trunk red, trunk green, uh, trunk blue. Um, we could also say that tall trees, for example, have a very specific color and like less tall trees, like we put, we could put color into this, uh, or we could just add in and say, okay, well, we have the data and now here is branch color also comes in separated. Uh, branch is size, um, trunk width. So it's going to be data dot trunk width times four. So we have branches size there. This is just branches size like this. So let's just do data dot branches size. And then at that point in time, we should just have access to this. Uh, draw, we pass in the trunk color. Right, because they're all the same for, for this specific case. And I don't necessarily want to change too much all at one time. All right, so fill trunk color. No stroke. Uh, we have a rectangle. So we're creating our trunk. So starting with trunk location at X and Y. Um, trunk height and trunk width. We fill with the branch color. We calculate what the middle of the trunk is going to be. And then we sort of add that in here for us. So if I do this, let's put this down, down here, and in world, where we create a tree here. So this is gonna create the branch color for us. And so now we're looking for the X and the Y. So the X and Y is gonna be based on uh, trunk width, which is just being set. Uh, here at this time. So we need to now, at this point in time, grab, uh, choose which of the trees we want to create, and then go with that. So I'm thinking probably a random, a random number. So um, we have two. We have two trees, because um, we have this tree type, tall tree, and uh, tree if I um, if I create an array based upon this and I can create that dynamically oh I know in world in a constructor here, we can figure out what our tree type is. So this dot uh, tree types equals like this. This is feeling a lot more like we should be having uh, some kind of uh, uh, class for for the tree um, tree data uh, because like this is I, I'm feeling this logic that should go into there. Uh, because like, should the world really have to do this calculation, or should the world just grab? Give me, give me a tree. Uh, let's do this first. Then we can, then we can refactor it and put it where we really want to go. Uh, so this is gonna be for let um, tree type in, and this is gonna be tree types. Uh, so this is the key of this object. So now we can just do this dot tree types dot push tree type. And this gives us now an array of strings. Down here in create tree, 
we can now grab a random number, uh, sort of a random tree type. So const random tree type equals, uh, we should have access to just random, that comes from p5.js, uh, and then it's going to be, okay, a number between, well, 0 and 1, but I can also set like the minimum and the maximum. So if I want 0 and uh, this dot tree types dot length, I can't remember if random is inclusive or exclusive. If we get some errors because it like goes outwards, then we'll know that it's uh, inclusive. So that gives us the string of the random tree type. At this point, we now want the uh, the tree data. So const uh, tree data equals and we're going to want you to be not tree, want tree data down here. Uh, this create tree and we pass it in the type. So we're in create tree and I'm calling create tree, which is totally legal, but it's going to look really, really kind of funky here. Yeah, I, it feels like maybe the, the data for this should be just in tree here and we can mix tree data and tree and sort of what a little bit of what world is doing all in the same place. Because if I have to do this, uh, create tree and pass it in uh, the random tree type. And that gives me the data for the tree. So now I have the tree data that I want. It's going to be either a tall tree or a normal tree. Then we calculate the color of the the branches. Then we tree push. Uh, new tree with uh, trunk width. So this is going to be the X uh, position. So it's going to be the entire width of the um, the arena plus the trunk width to make sure it goes over to the right plus the branch size, um, times the branch size. So we just make sure you go, we're really far over to the right. I think this probably only needs to be plus. We don't need to be like that far over to the right. Uh, if, if anything, we would just need to multiply this by two. All right, the height is going to be the height minus the trunk height. So that way the bottom of the, tr the branches looks like it's here. The trunk width. Okay, so at this point, we need to look at our tree. We're looking at the X and the Y, and then, then the data. So instead of this trunk width and trunk height, uh, we're going to have the uh, tree data. Then we have tree color, and then they have the tree alpha here, which I we're not using apparently. So that should just be fine. Um, if I try this, what happens? Error galore. Um, uncaught and promise reference error. Tree data is not defined. Like right here. Tree data. Tree data. Okay, so uh, world.js, line four five. All right. This is going to be the tree trunk color. Did I put trunk color in here? I did. Okay, so um, I'm not going to want to store the color here anymore, probably. I'm going to want to put this Yeah, so, so tree color is this randomized color that we have. But this color right here, I think we can take you away. 
and we're going to put you in the tree constructor here. Because we can say, okay, so trunk color, this dot trunk color equals, it's a new color, uh, and we're going to use this data dot, okay, so yes, everyone does create this in their instance. Um, however, like if we ever do need to change it, which we might, I get, I suppose, for different types of, of trees, uh, then, then that would be a good thing. Down here in draw, we want uh, the trunk color is not going to be passed in anymore. Uh, we're going to fill this dot trunk color. See how you're doing. Uh, tree data is not defined in world.js line four. So this dot tree velocity. Okay, so I think this is going to be the same thing. We want our our velocity of the trees to potentially be unique. One of the things I was thinking of is we could have uh, trees that move at different speeds to give an indication of distance away from us. So if I, if I remove you around and we just say, okay, this dot tree velocity. So in this case, this dot velocity equals, we're gonna create a vector. We're gonna have our data and we're gonna just get it speed x, speed y. Okay, uh, in our update, instead of taking in velocity anymore, we're just gonna do this dot velocity. Okay, now, now what? Um, ooh, too much recursion. I wasn't even trying to do recursion, so that's impressive. Uh, World.js line 25. Because here in line 25, um, we grab a random tree equals random zero and this tree's type length. Why would that, oh wait, create tree. I didn't want this to be create tree with a this on it. I think that got added in by my, uh, my editor. It's trying to be nice to me. Do we get a tree? So far we haven't been getting any trees. Uh, Rect was expecting at least three arguments but only received two. So our rectangle is, is not working. So I think that's in the draw tree uh, section here. We create this rect. It says it's expecting three arguments. I only received two. Uh, so this dot trunk width, trunk height. When we create our constructor, let's console log uh, what, what this is. So in tree, it gets run once. And that's it, never gets run again. That's cool. Uh, we have a branch color that has um, 0, 140, 0, 255, okay. That, that seems fine, that's the different color of green. Branch's size is undefined. Middle of trunk is nan. I don't even see that here. I guess that's um, calculated somewhere else. Trunk color is 
nan nan nan. Okay, so none of this data is working. So I think I think that my initial sort of thought of us combining these together, I think that's where we're going to have to go with this, uh, because trying to do this in this sort of hybrid, it's sort of mixed all around state, isn't really working. So I think this tree data, uh, we're going to have to mix in with this uh, this specific tree as it is right here. Um, so maybe we can have uh, like almost a, a data here. We could, do these have to be functions. Um, can I do properties? No, I, properties have to go into the constructor, I believe. So if I do something like um, base base tree, ooh, uh, I could create another class for the tree data. Uh, I could put them together for right now. Would that make sense? Uh, we have like a specific tree and then we have a tree data. I'll figure it out as we go along. Uh, okay, so in here, we want our tree data to have some methods. We want it to have like the basic properties. We want to create, I, I guess like, I, I'm worried this might become a singleton. Uh, if I do an actual class, which isn't necessarily what I want to go with. I wonder if tree here can have the methods that pull in all this tree data uh, together. So uh, because we have, uh, the other problem is this is all just in the base scope because JavaScript and the way that I've done this, I, I'm not using like we're doing as native as possible, which means I'm not using any TypeScript or anything else that forces uh, scoping by file. So it's all just global scope, which is fun with that question mark. So we have our base tree, we have this, um, this is not really a create tree. This is more of create tree data. We're gonna need, when we create a new tree, I guess like, what do we really need? We, um, maybe the tree should, should be aware of everything else that it has. Like the arena width, the arena height. Um, the other thing that I just realized, if I just rename this to create tree data, does everything else work? Because it was doing a recursion by accident. Uh, create tree data. So it did run this twice. So try to create two trees for us. The branches color was fine, but I think that's because there it's defined right here. Our branches size is undefined. Where is that? figured out. In tree, we have branches size, which is supposedly coming in off of the data um, and branches, branches side. Data is the third thing coming in. So that would be this tree data. Uh, create data, random tree type. 
Now, if I if I just change this to the string of the tree type that we want, so we want let's say just plain tree. Say we don't do this. We want to create a tree. If I do everything else. Straight up error. Uh, can't access property length of this dot. Uh, right. We're not going to do a random tree type anymore. Okay. So we're now creating um, a tree. We don't have any branches anymore. So that's cool. Branches size is still undefined. So we're expecting branch size uh, off of this data, which it's branch size. So branch size. It's a little bit, a little bit small. Uh, so let's um, let's fix that. Now we know, hey, here in tree, we can just update this in one place. So instead of four, if I do something like uh, 25, maybe we can go bigger than that. Let's do 75. There you go, that looks normal again. Okay, so we have that. In create tree, which I believe create tree is run uh, randomly somewhere else, but we can potentially do our own little random pull here. So if I don't do that entire random generation thingy, if if I just say um, if I just am aware of the different types of trees here, but only in strings. Uh, so I, I pass that around as strings, then I could just, I could say, uh, const tree types equals, uh, we're going to have tree and is it tall tree? Tall tree. Now, when we create a data, I want a random one of these. So we're going to do a random, uh, or I, I guess it's going to be uh, tree types of position random uh, between zero and tree types dot length. So if I do that, do we now get a tall tree? Or do we get an error? So branch size is undefined. So when we passed in the string t, the string tree, that worked. Try minus one. No, that's still not working. We're still getting those undefined. Uh, this, it, it's curious. Which type of tree is it try like what? Create tree data, tree types. Like what are we getting out of here? I would think that this random zero. Are you giving me a float? You're giving me a float, I bet. Const uh, random tree. I guess I'll just call this tree types index equals you. I want console.log tree types index now, and then we can use it right here. You're going to be a float, aren't you? Or just nothing at all?
Oh god, look at that. 0 0.0075. Did it try to create? Yeah, here's another tree. 0 0.3. 0 0.1. Okay, I thought that there was a random for us uh, from P5JS, but I guess, I mean, it's working. But I guess uh, I, I was mistaken. Um, P5, yes. Ooh, uh, P5JS is going offline um, for, for this. So I think we should take a few minutes as a uh, for George Floyd and everyone else who is being uh, actively harmed. And hopefully we can get through this and like stop the police violence that causes all those riots uh, and turns peaceful protests into riots. The reference is still available to us, so we can go to that. Uh, now, what were we looking for? Uh, we were looking for random here. So I think that's under math. Math. Oh, here, random. We just want random. Returns a random floating point number. Takes either zero, one, or two arguments. Um, Okay, so random min and max. Ooh, wait. I can hand it an array to choose from? Well, in that case, tree types, we can just do, uh, instead of, instead of that, we don't need you, create tree data, tree, uh, it's going to be the opposite. Uh, we're going to do random of the tree types. And now the trees are working. We're able to create them. Uh, are we getting a tall tree ever? Um, I'm not necessarily seeing anything that's taller. Because we got a tall tree. Uh, what the tall tree does, uh, it's just got a trunk height of 400. And that, that's it. And this is where I'm a little bit worried that, um, this object of design, like what's happening is, is maybe overwriting, uh, but it's also going to be a little bit hard for us to tell. Let us const just say tree data um, equals this. Then I can console log that out. 
creating tree the type and the tree data and we're going to return the tree data now also i'm apparently calling um oh i wonder if this is Ooh, I didn't even notice. We're we're having errors here. We're still oh we're getting like branch size undefined, middle trunk, not a number, uh trunk width undefined. Was that for the tall one? That's my guess. That must be for the tall one. So branch is size, uh, data dot branch size. Theoretically, it should, it should have that because it should mix this in with tall tree. But let's see what uh, what happens here. We're we're going to console log this out and we're going to see what the data is that we're getting. Okay, so creating tree, tall tree. That's it, that's the entire object that we have. The prototype tree and trunk height 400. So that's not what I wanted. We have this object that assign tree types uh, type and tree types. Oh, this tree dot prototype. That's um so tree types of type to get us what we're looking for. And then from that we need the prototype. So just dot prototype. I think Um, oh, and that gives us the name of this. So then I need tree types again like this. All right, so creating tree, tall tree. Okay, so we have branch size, height. Um, the trunk height is 250. That's not a tall tree. Let's try moving you up like this. And having this, um, this tree type be there in that order. So creating the tree, creating a tree, tall tree. Trunk height is 400, uh, but also creating tree. Trunk height is uh, 200. Okay, so that's that's a good sign. Um, our branches position, like they all seem to be the same height, but I think that's because the branch positions are not where we want them to be. We want the branches to start at a very specific spot according to the height of the trunk. And where does that happen? Uh, under draw, So we figure out what the middle of the trunk is, and then we create these, these count, oh, look at this. We have some magic numbers here. That's gonna be a problem. So we figure out the exact middle of the trunk, which I don't think is just like left and right, it's also up and down. So this dot trunk location dot X plus this dot trunk, the, the trunk width, 
Uh, divided by two, okay. Oh, that's just the X. Now, each triangle is three points. So X1, and then Y1 is this dot trunk location at Y minus this dot branch at. Okay, so that doesn't seem terrible. Is it actually more of that it's extending down and it's, it's a little bit too, too far down? Uh, when we create the tree off of the world, we give it the, the X and the Y. Um, the height is minus this, oh, trunk height. That's a problem. So we don't need those anymore. Uh, for the width, Equals, um, this is going to be tree data dot trunk width, I believe. Trunk width, trunk height, yeah. And the height is going to be height minus tree data dot trunk height. Let's see if that works. That looks like a tall tree. And we have non-tall trees now too. Okay. So we have tall trees and non-tall trees, and it's randomly choosing uh, between the two. Okay, so that's really cool. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to do here is I want to make the tall trees really slow. So we have this speed x, speed y. In tall tree, we're going to add that in here. So speed x is going to be, this one is a negative 1. I'm going to say like negative uh, 0 0.2. So super, super, super slow for us. Maybe half the speed, 0 0.5. Uh, we're also going to want to like draw it always first, which is going to be interesting. I want to see, oh, uh, oh, look at that. It just happens to work. Because I put in the, the velocity is now based upon that tree type too, so that just works. Uh, so far, I haven't seen any of the big trees created in front. Oh, no, here is... Like some some of them, I, I see the, the branches sometimes in front. Changing the order of them, so like sorting them, uh, that would that would probably do it. Where I could sort the trees. Uh, based upon what type they are. So if they're if they're like the large trees, I want them sorted, you know, behind. Uh, I could almost put like a Z index type thing here, and then uh, we'll do our sorts based upon that. I could, let's see, so the tree draws itself. The world keeps the trees. Um, every time we add a tree, we want to make sure that we put it into the correct position in the, in the array. Which means I need to make sure that the, the tall trees are in the front of the array and the Normal trees are in the back of the array. So when we create this tray here, we're just we're just pushing in. Uh, we're just sort of naively adding this in here. Uh, I think uh, one way to guarantee that we're always like 
adding into the, the correct thing is we need to figure out what type of what type of tree we have. So I'm thinking here we're gonna do um we'll just add in a type tree and then tall tree. We'll add in type uh tall tall tree. There, that works for that. Now um let's not do this push here. I'm gonna move you one line up. I'm gonna do const new tree equals we get our new tree. And then we're gonna decide which method we use to add into the array at this point. So we're gonna say if uh, tree data. Uh, so if tree data dot type is equal to tree, then we want to push it because that goes on to the the far end. Then you happen here. So this dot uh, trees dot push new tree. Um, otherwise, if you're not a tree, you're you're just um, you're you're a tall tree. You're literally anything else. We're gonna go into the back of the array, which is the front. Uh, it's interesting. This dot this dot trees dot unshift goes into the front new tree, and so this should make it so that they all now show up for us. If I want to be able to just watch it sort of play on its own without worrying about like hitting anything, I think the easiest way to do that is to, uh, what was it, it's game state, I think, is registering itself. On notify here. So, if we just say, you know, I don't want to register, or maybe is that is that the main game? So we create that. Where did we register? So instead of game state, it's new game state. Okay, collided event add observer. I just stopped that. We're, we, we don't add ourselves as an observer. And so now we can just play this and we won't, uh, we won't collide in anything. We can just watch the trees sort of come in and float in front of us as we go through this, uh, this forest. Which I think, I think this is a, uh, this is a uh, pretty pretty cool. We now have like these different trees. We have the tree data that's set up for us. Uh, we can create uh, as many trees as we want. We can have their speed individually set. So I, we can create like this gigantic forest uh, for ourselves. If we want that trunk color to be a little bit better for playing the game, then all we have to do is come here into the tree color, uh, the tree data. And we're just gonna say, okay, well, trunk green, what is it? Uh, zero is dark. My computer froze for a second. I don't see any drop frames, so I don't know if that like froze for you, but it froze for me. Um, let's see, so if I want, If I keep the ratio exactly the same, and I just add 100 to it. Now it's gonna be a lot easier to see all the obstacles and the player, um, and everything else is, is good. A Pixel Logic Dev, thank you so much for the raid. Good morning, good morning. Um, 
Uh, Pixelod Jev, what, uh, how is things? Are you still working on that uh, the mobile app? How is the stream? Um, yeah, thank, thank you. Um, oh, you have you have one of the oh you got you got the five uh, uh, pull requests as well. Yeah, no, that was a that was a lot of fun last year when we we did that. Um, actually created a uh, we we did some of the stuff on on stream too, which was super awesome. Uh, this year we should do it again. Uh, we can all get shirts. Um, let's see. But uh, Pixel Logic Dev, how is how is the stream? Also, everyone, welcome, welcome. Uh, you're starting a new project on Thursdays to set up a live stream. Road trip infrastructure. Ooh. So I I take it you're gonna go on a road trip and live stream yourself on that? Are you gonna be programming while you're traveling, or is it just uh uh just more of like uh live blogging as you're as you're going through? Uh for everyone else, um we are Uh, we are building, so we're learning uh, a game dev bro programming patterns. So what that means is we have this book, gameprogrammingpatterns.com uh, by Robert Nystrom. We've been reading through it. Uh, we've just finished reading yesterday through the uh, prototype pattern. And so today I have a... Uh, I have a JavaScript um, uh, P5.js Infinite Runner that we made, and I implemented the prototype pattern into this game. Oh, I like it. Everything's slowing down now because I don't actually delete the trees uh, once we end. So now, now it's uh, the memory is eh, getting a little bit iffy here. Got a bounce work. All right. Well, thank you so much for the raid again, uh, and uh, I hope that you have a great day at work. It's a lot of fun. Live driving, essentially. Ooh, that'll be interesting. Um, and for everyone else, uh, we I just did finish implementing this. Uh, I'm going to push up this code. So saved everything. Let's open up, get Kraken here. And we are in learning game design patterns. And so we have uh, implemented a prototype pattern in JavaScript. So uh, let's do a quick um, update on what we did code-wise here. So instead of implementing the more traditional uh prototype like a prototype pattern for object oriented we used a more data oriented design so we have a we have a base tree here and it's just the data and then we have a tall tree as well uh, this just defines what's different about the tall tree but it also keeps track of what the base tree is its prototype as it were um, it also has we we store their types uh, as it were uh, the other thing I have is this lookup table that allows us to say, oh, uh, what are the tree types, like all tree or, or tree? Uh, I'm using this down here. So we have this function create tree data. It takes in a type, which is just a string. And I then clone all of these, these tree data, as it were, into a new object. This works because everything that are in these objects are um, primitive values. So a shallow clone is a full clone. So object.assign, uh, we start with an empty object, and then we say, okay, well, give us our um, the base tree type. So that's this one. And uh, that's if there's a prototype. If there isn't a prototype, uh, for example, this tree doesn't have a prototype, it's undefined. But uh, I believe that uh, object assigned can handle that. If I hand it undefined, it doesn't really care. And then we have tree types type. Uh, that's going to be our potential like 
the tall tree if we have a tall tree if we add in any more um we'll have to like turn this into a loop to basically go through and and add in our trees or maybe we can do like a dot 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 and spread it or something like that but anyways this allows us to dynamically create a tall tree or a tree i don't need this console log anymore uh, we return this tree data that comes back into our world where we have a tree a, a create tree create tree is being randomly called uh, so it's being you know every i don't know 20 percent of the time for each frame there's a chance of creating a tree uh, we keep track of the tree types now this is separate uh, it does have to individually know this tree type i don't have any kind of method to dynamically uh, grab well here's all the tree types that way world doesn't have to know exactly how tree data is implemented uh, this is the only piece of that uh, we get the random we, we call this uh, create tree data and we use the p5.js random uh, method to sort of choose a random tree type from that list and uh, then we set the the branch color to be completely random no matter what and we then create the new tree uh, using a constructor and either push it to the beginning of the array of all the trees if it's a tall tree because we want it to uh, we want it to push you know we want it to draw first or the back of the array if we it's a short tree because we want to to draw last and um, and that's it oh I do have removed trees off screen okay uh, well then in that case I forgot that I had implemented that in the one of the previous streams uh, I wonder why everything just slowed way down I guess it could be my my console logs because if I remove that that might that might be better also my timing for the game it's not nearly as as nice playable because it's um, a little bit too fast which is nothing like the Rust game. Uh, oh yeah, and I, I turned off the the observer for collision, so it doesn't actually matter for this. Uh, hello, Chantilly. Good morning. Um, and and that's it. So that is the prototype pattern in JavaScript. Now next time we're going to be implementing prototype pattern in Rust, which is gonna be a little bit different because we're not able to create those objects in exactly the same way. So I'm thinking we're gonna end up doing a the more traditional prototype pattern with it where we have a constructor and maybe like a clone object where we just call that and it just creates a clone of it over and over and over again. I don't know, I'll have to figure that out, but that'll be super interesting to do.